Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Preschool All-Stars podcast. I'm Bethany Johnson, and I'm joined today by Monique Recasa. How are you doing today, Monique? Wonderful. Thank you, Bethany, for having me. Of course. I can't wait to hear what you have going on. But first, can you fill us in on what was going on before you decided to start your preschool journey? Okay, well, I've been working in the field of early childhood education for the last 26 years. Started out as an aide, moved up to a teacher, all the way up into a director. So my last eight years, I was a center director for various preschools, and I've always loved teaching. And so I thought, you know, being a director, you kind of get the best of both worlds because you're in the classroom as well, helping out teachers. And then you also do the administrative side by enrollment and all that. So I really loved what I do. Um, With my last job, I did lose my last job in February. Um, With COVID this past year, it has affected a lot of people as far as staffing wise as well too. And it has always been a lifelong dream to open my own school. And so I figured what better time to do it is to work on it now. So this is where I am. I um, saw Joy's ad on Facebook. It kept like coming up every time. And I was like, you know what? Let me, I have nothing to lose. It's a free book. Might as well read it. And so I ordered it and I read the book within two days and I was hooked. So I would finally start in my school. I got licensed. I'm doing a local school. I was originally going to do online first, but I, I, my heart was always local. So um, we awesome. September 7th of this year. So, oh, yay. Okay. So you're still pretty new. Yes. So, okay. And did you, had you like set up everything for online and then you're like, no, I need to do local. Exactly. I did okay. I had backdrop everything. It was all set up. I love it still, but, um, I what was, was like, it that, that made you push to go in the other direction? Because every time I thought about doing the online, I am a little camera shy, believe it or not. I do photography on the side. It's usually okay. behind the camera, not on the camera. <laughs> and so, you know, just even doing lives, I was afraid of. Um, so I think maybe something now in the future is something I might want to add to my program. Because if you reach more than one student, why not? You can go worldwide. So I was yeah. like, that's pretty awesome. I've been inspired by a lot of our all-star sisters. And it's just so amazing at what everybody's doing now and mm-hmm. how joy inspired us all. I know, I know, man, I hear it's literally, it's so funny. We all like found joy from like a Facebook ad and we all had that same trepidation. Like, mm, I don't know, that sounds too good to be true. And then we're like, well, what can we lose? You know, we get a free book, you know? And then we're all, and then we all read it in two days. And then we were all like, yes, we're going to do it. It's like, we're we all, all fired up and we're all excited and yeah. we're all cheering each other on. The sisterhood mm-hmm. that we've um, we've had had for this past couple months that I've joined has just been nothing but great and positive things. You know, you could have a, a, a down day, but you're just like, let me go log on to the all-star page and just get uplifted instantly. And it's just so awesome mm-hmm. how everybody shares. It's a group I've been looking for all my life, I think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so oh my awesome. gosh, I hear that. So I hear, I totally get that. I have never actually done a live in the group and I've like thought about it. Like lately I'm like, man, I talked to all these ladies and they're so brave and they all talk about how they're so nervous to do a live. And I'm like, just do it, just do it. And then I'm like, but I've never done a live. So <laughs> I feel like I need to uh, step up and practice what I preach and do a live, but I still haven't actually done it. But I'm every time I see one of the ladies go live, I'm like, oh, I'm like, yay, I need to I need to work myself up to do that. Yeah. OK, so tell me about starting out and where you're at now. OK, so the whole planning phase, like I said, started in March and then April, I joined the All Stars. So I've been um, actually planning on opening my own school within the last year. Okay. This was prior to COVID happening. And um, so everything more so now was like to get the everything written down and all the policies, procedures, the handbooks, you know, parent handbooks, um, employee handbooks and stuff like that. And we were going to originally open up when I say we, it's me and my best friend. Um, we did a partnership together oh, to nice. do this, and it's so awesome. And um, so we o- decided to do a local preschool, start out in a home and then eventually, hopefully, you know, um, in the, within the next two years, we'll open a center based um, okay. but the plan for now is to open up um, since we opened up this one in next year, we're opening up another local uh, preschool through a home. And okay. that's where we are. we're a large family child care um, licensed facility. Um, we run awesome. it as a preschool and um, we Who's do home? care. Huh? Who's home? Mine. Your home. So, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and how many kids can you have at one time? Um, 14 at the max. Um, 
with the license, a large license. Um, since I have the educational background, um, I have a bachelor's in child development, and then also with the experience, they were able to open, um, give us a large license right away. Oh, without, nice. Without having at least a year open in a home. So it was really nice. Cool. Where are you Disney, located? Um, Where Miami, you? which is San Diego, California. Oh, San Diego. Okay. Okay, cool. And you said it went pretty smoothly getting the license and everything? Yes, it's just the waiting game. I think what yeah. was nice is that since I've been in the field, I know a lot of the analysts and I've, I've been around and it's like, as long as you had all the paperwork done correctly, there was no like any flags or anything that you had to wait for longer because if you have to do corrective measures and also like fix things, then it's going to delay the process of getting licensed. Yeah. So once we submitted that um, application, it happened like fast within oh, 30 days. Good. It was really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I know around me, they're like desperate for like programs like this, especially in home. They, they're like, they're like, wow. When they come and see it, they're like, wait, so you only, you do two half day classes. They're, they're like seeing that out of a home is like blowing their minds. And they're like the first, my first time she came in, she's like, so would you want to go to a large group instead of family group? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, not right now. I'm just trying to get licensed for six. I'm like, let me yeah. But they're they like want that. They're like, these are the kind of programs we need because everyone's like our older care providers are, I guess, once they put everything online and made all the licensing stuff online, a lot of the older ladies who used to run family yes. care like stopped being licensed. So yeah. they're they're like wanting people to open more licensed things. And with COVID as well, um, a lot of parents feel more, more comfortable in a smaller environment. Right, and, right. I love, and I love that fact that when we do do tours that we can say, you know, we are COVID-19 friendly. We don't allow inside visitors. Mm -hmm. and parents drop off at the door. Um, mm -hmm. We use an app called Brightwheel, which I absolutely love. I use that too. I love Brightwheel. Yeah, I'm an ambassador, so I love it. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. All the parents enjoy it. Um, they rave about it. And I think that was also a selling point too. Um, mm -hmm. So I really think that when you lay out the business, um, when you have that time to write down first what your mission is, what your goals are, and what do you want to achieve, everything starts to fall in place. Once you get mm -hmm. licensed, everything gets in order. Um, I didn't actually post a family, a founding family script at all. Nice. Um, you know, I didn't mark it at all until like two weeks before. Oh, wow. Only because I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I think that- yeah um it's like a secret I don't know I kind of kept it a secret I told Joy this on another interview um when people find out about you it's a lot of word of mouth because I did a lot of flyers around town not one of the calls from from those flyers at all mm. so it was more of the Facebook um pages you know like provider groups uh parent yeah. group, mom groups yeah that's where all my revenue came from and yeah. all the, yeah. the prospective families which is amazing because it's like kind of like you got to handpick your families or actually they chose you so it was mm -hmm. really amazing to you know establish those relationships right off hand when you do the tours so all the tours that I did you know they all enrolled some mm -hmm. of them didn't leave without enrolling so which is yeah. so nice. like no it's so it's so crazy it's so hard to find good um, providers it's so hard to find quality programs and so they just jump on it really quick so I just think it's awesome. so important just to be transparent be yourself and you know that just goes a long way and be honest Absolutely. And yeah, these small groups, like that's what it's so parents want that they're looking for that so much nowadays. And I, when they come in and they're like, Oh my gosh, they're like, Oh, this is, Oh my gosh, this is perfect. This is great. Just what we need, you know, like a yeah. small atmosphere, especially for all the pandemic kids who've never been, you know, to preschool. And they're, she's like, I, I don't, I, he's not, doesn't do well with kids. He like doesn't, you know, freaks out when we go out, to, you know, big yes. groups. And I'm like, well, he doesn't have to learn a big building here. He just walks into the garage and there's only, you know, seven people. He, he, you know, it's just such a great environment for these kids who haven't gotten the chance to go anywhere in the past year and a half. And just how small and intimate the groups are mm -hmm. is just so important. You get more one on one individual attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Than that I never had that in a large center, you know? Right. And yeah. so it's just been so nice. And that's what spurred, you know, the idea of opening up another local school that my best friend will probably most likely be at, at that mm -hmm. location. Yeah. Which would be awesome. So, and yeah. That's the goal. I mean, I just love it. Um, I think being in this field, you see the good things, the bad things and the things that you like, and you just 
gather all the good things that you take from different programs and you assimilate into your own and your own beliefs and what you want to do and see how these children grow. It's so amazing to witness it all. It is. It's so cool to, I wish that every teacher could get this experience to, to be able to like have a small group setting and teach the way they, they want to teach and like watch that growth without having all these other people who aren't involved in your classroom, like telling you what to do. Cause it's exactly. such a different teaching experience and it's such, it's so much more fulfilling, like actually being able to give these kids what they need instead of what someone who awesome. works in an office a thousand miles away thinks they need, you know? And I want to be honest, I actually saw your video first that I watched uh -huh. and you have inspired me. I was like, this is so amazing. And now to see full circle, how you have a child now and you get to be home with your child. So it's so amazing. Oh, that's, that's awesome so to awesome. hear. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your program now. What is it? Do you have a niche? So I truly, I really love the Reggio Emilia, which is a play-based program. I okay. really love that. And then I've worked at a Montessori school in the past. So I do love some of the Montessori practices. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel like there's no one way that's correct to be, or the best. And I really just feel like since I really love the way the way that um, those approaches go hand in hand, I yeah. like to simulate that into my program. And so basically the environment is a learning environment and what you what materials you put into the classroom and what the children can um, you know, actually experience and, and touch and feel and through their senses and everything is so important because that's how they learn about the world around them. You know, There's not one of us that are the same. We all learn differently. And I think that is just why not tap in all of those different learning um, ways. And so that's that's what we do at our school, um, even early on as infants and toddlers, because my friend, her, her forte is infants and tods. I mean, although I do love hugging and, you know, like be playing with babies. Myself, <laughs> yeah. I just really love the preschool age where they're final, they're at that point where they're making sense of their world mm -hmm. by like what they're learning and what they're hearing and what they're seeing and how they're making those connections in their brain on, and how things work. So it's so amazing. So that's exactly what I, I mean, I think that being in a multi-age classroom is awesome because the younger ones do learn a lot from the older ones as well. Yeah. And then the older ones have this, it's so neat to see this empathy that they have for the younger ones to teach. Mm -hmm. to see that. Leadership that they get from it's that. so amazing. I mean, it's a win-win. There's no wrong way of teaching. And like I said, I've said before that it doesn't take someone with experience to learn this. Um, you don't have to have experience to be a teacher. You just have to have a love and a desire to want to make a difference in a child's life and a family's life. And so you can totally learn all this stuff too. Mm -hmm. What great way that, and, and such rich knowledge that we have now that I didn't have 26 years ago. I mean, yeah. I, I went into this field when I was 18 years old. I'm 44 now. So it's been a long time. I was a young mom. And so I decided, you know, I've always wanted to be a teacher. And when I became, um, went into the early child education field, I felt like I was actually learning how to be a better parent. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty awesome that yeah. these courses turned into like a parenting classes to me as well. So I just yeah. think that we can also share that knowledge with parents because instead of them thinking it's daycare all day or they're just playing, there's so much more meaning behind all of it. So yeah, it's funny to say that. Cause I've been reading all these, like how to talk. So kids will listen and like all these parenting books and they have, and because, you know, my baby's only seven months now, he's not talking back yet, but I want to like train myself to talk to him that way. So it's oh, yeah. second nature. And, and, yeah. and talking about everything you're doing, whether you're doing uh -huh. anything, or yeah. anything, it's they're learning their yeah. senses and they're, it's just so amazing. To and see it's made them. me such a better teacher. Like I'm trying to be a better parent, but now yeah. I'm implementing the way, like speaking this way to all my students. And it's like, wow, this is like life-changing just to be able to, to be able to implement all these things and feel like I'm getting better at my craft. And like, this is making me a better parent and being a parent is making me a better teacher. And they're just go together so well and being able to, you know, those two things coincide because normally, you know, working at most jobs, you wouldn't say this job makes me a better parent. You know, like I had right. a lot of jobs that I feel make would make me a better parent. And this really does because I can practice how I want to talk to my kid. I'm implementing it with all these kids and I'm seeing the difference and I'm seeing what works and I'm seeing how they respond. And I'm just hoping, I mean, yes. I, you know, he's, he hasn't been able to respond to anything yet, but I'm hoping yeah. that once I'm trained myself to be able to talk this way, then it'll come naturally with him. And I love that having a job that makes me be a better parent. That's like everything I want. 
Exactly. And also, it's so nice to even be the observant as a teacher mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. listening to those interactions that the children yeah. are having among each other. Um, I've had a child, uh, I want to say maybe two children now um, that had speech, you know, speech language development. Yeah. Abilities. And so, um, you know, the parent was like, you know, I paid so much money just for speech therapy and it didn't work. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. well, you know what, every child, we have to see where there are and what we can do as a provider to help them you know, get to where they need to be. And it's just so amazing that, you know, I was able to relate. I go, my son was in speech when he was little and, you know, he did go to preschool and he had speech therapy. But I, as a parent, I also looked into resources online, like what can I do to help my child? And so I said, you know, what, let me, let me try. I go, let me see what I can do. And literally, I'm not kidding you, within two weeks, he's full on sentences. Wow. He was just one words here and there. And he's, he just turned four. And now it's just the language. It's it's what you ask, how you ask them. It's not mm -hmm. what you ask. It's how you ask and how we talk to yeah. them. You're asking yeah. open ended questions, getting the language to talk to develop. So it's so amazing, and it's just so rewarding to hear and to see that. Like I said, when you he listen to those interactions that the children have, if you hear them reciting songs you've taught them, or just the interactive play that you're doing with them and being mm -hmm. very uh, present is so important. Yes, absolutely. Children teach us how to live in the present, which I love. I think that's why I never got tired of teaching. You know, it's never a job. It's when you love something, it's never a job. And so it's yeah. so neat that every day is a new day and, and you just get um, the chance to be a part of their life every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. So yeah, totally. I had one parent be like, um, <laughs> like she's she loves preschool so much and I'm seeing so you know she's riding a tricycle now and she's playing pretend and she never played pretend before and I'm like that's amazing like playing pretend awesome. what a like you know like a silly thing to be like yay but like that's so cool that they're they weren't able you know their brain wasn't quite there yet to be able yeah. to make up these things and now they're doing it on their own and at home with their siblings and like we know how important pretend play is for yes. you know for kids and their social skills and everything and I'm like that's just so cool it's so cool that we can be a part of that and we can facilitate that and yeah. change these kids lives definitely and it's so neat to even see children that I've taught gosh over two what two decades <laughs> I feel old, but you know, I'm like, I potty trained you. They remember you by first. Yeah. Monique, I remember you. So yeah. it's so neat that, you know, they become part of your, you know, a life, your life. So mm -hmm. it's so neat. And they, when they see you outside of school, they mm -hmm. you live at school most of the time. Oh right? my gosh. Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, you actually go to the store. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. So, they get so excited. And so, like, like I said, it's just, it's just so amazing. And it's amazing to be a part of um, mm -hmm. something that's, I feel that is sometimes underrepresented represented, and you know a lot of careers. I really feel that teachers are just as important as nurses oh, yeah. and doctors, and you know mm -hmm. we're doing we're doing a lot of service for for our families and our children, and they're our future. Okay. So I wouldn't do it any other way. And these are like the most formative years of their lives. So like Definitely. being a part of these these early years is being a part of their whole lives because you're the you're there to help mold them into you know the person that they're going to become which is like the coolest thing ever <laughs> i know and i think that's why i got stuck in the, in the early child education i never wanted to go further because i feel like if i create those foundations now how mm -hmm. much greater it's going to be for their advantage later on in their adulthood life or yep. even in their elementary high school years and yep. you know there's just so much benefits you know whether it's decision making with with peers and just stuff like that. I mean, it's it's so un, it's so unnoticed now that you definitely make a difference. And yes. I think it's coming more more um, in the modern world that how the early child education it, and a lot a lot of the families I've interviewed or that they've interviewed me when they come and do the tours. Um, they are very um, ahead <laughs> things that I would have never known like mm -hmm. they have their checklist their their um, questionnaires mm -hmm. and everything which is great you know I think that's great you know especially yeah. when you're deciding you know making the deciding factor which provider that you want to go with you know and why and it's just yep. it's so so important so yeah absolutely everyone knows more now because of the the internet and the social media it's mm -hmm. a good yeah Totally. And the research. Yeah, there's so much more research now about how kids play and how kids learn 
that if we just take resources that are available to us even exactly exactly just backs up everything that we're doing i love it Mm -hmm. yeah i'm still going to school right now i'll be done with my master's next year finally (laughs) congratulations i'd like to teach some child development courses at my at the local child um element uh not elementary school sorry the local uh community colleges so that's awesome yes get it girl Ah. (laughs) monique love it (laughs) (laughs) that sounds good yeah (laughs) so um let's see let's go back to your program what are the hours that you guys do we're open 6 30 to 6 um we do have military families um but to be honest with you um we only have children from 7 30 between 7 7 30 and they leave by five they're all gone usually okay so you have like full day yes okay is it it only three to five year olds um, no, so we have infants. So the younger infants that we do have right now, they're all around 12 months to 15 months. Okay. And then after that is two years old to four years old right now. Okay. And it's you and your friend who yes. you partner with? Yes. So she has the younger ones. She does the circle times, all the activities and art and stuff with her children. Okay. And younger age group. And then I do the preschool age group. And then we okay. do stuff as well and then we do our meals together we do our outside time together it's so neat to see that I love it the older the older Joe's like I'm like a big brother this is like my little sister it's so cute to see it yeah yeah that's great so uh how much do you charge and you yeah how much do you charge for the full time so full time for infant care under 20 is 23 months and under is 270 a week okay. and then for a preschool it's 260 a week Okay. And how did you come up with those prices? Are you kind of like in the middle of big centers and home cares or? Yes, did so I did, I did the needs and assessment in my area and that area, what the average cost of childcare cost in that area for the home providers and the center based. And um, we're pretty much around the same as um, our home, home care providers. Okay. Um, but in January, we are going to increase um, because the, the cost of living and just everything Mm-hmm. And so we're going to probably go to, from 270 to 300, but there okay. are home cares, I mean, home providers that are charging for infant care, 550 to 600 a week. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> I, was research, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like two or three times what I'm charging. Yeah, that's <laughs> wow. That's a lot. I mean, no wonder yeah, they're doing it right now and because there's a shortage of infant care mm. and, and it's, there's three-year wait lists. There's, it's, wow. I don't know if it's in, like that in your area, but it's really bad in San Diego. So I'm like, I need to just open an infant center. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. But the, so, the babies that are all getting born, you know, mm-hmm. all the babies from COVID and the yeah. ones. And I know infant care is more expensive anyway, because the ratios are a lot less, right? Yeah. 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 We can't have more than four. And <laughs> if you have four infants, um, you know, children under 24 months, you could only have a max of 12. But mm-hmm. if you have three infants, you could have up to 14. So we decided we'll just do the four infants and then have 12 and the ratio is a little smaller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see if, you know, as the children a little, you know, age up a little bit, we might go back to three. But right now I'm quite, we're satisfied with the way we are. And we have 16 enrolled because of all the part, the, if there's part time, we still charge full time. But we can um, have like a Tuesday, Thursday child, a half yeah. day child, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Um, Friday, half days, you know. So, okay. So, some kids are half days. Maximize the day. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So, nice. So, where do you do it out of? What part of your house? The living room. So, the living room was converted into um, my preschool room. Okay. And it's pretty neat. When I walked in, I literally visualized everything. And then I wrote, I drew out the sketch and then I put it together. So nice. I was, yeah, it's so awesome. It was the fun, the best part. I think that was so fun. Um, you know, going to Ikea and getting the shelves that fit in the, cause it, it's a small space. So I, I was like, how does, how am I going to do this to maximize, to make it look, you know, more open. And so mm-hmm. I was able to just get the white cubby shelves, you know, not, not the big ones, but there's actually smaller sizes of the same amount of cubicles. Okay. So, really cool. so we have our cubby unit on the entry. When you walk in, it's to the wall. And then we have two more units on the right side. And then we have the easel. Um, we covered our fireplace um, 
with um, my idea was I want to have a magnetic chalkboard so I can mm -hmm. use for circle time and then I could take it off if they want to use it for chalkboard or you know drawing and stuff mm -hmm. like that even magnets you know mm -hmm. and so that's what I did with that and then we covered the bottom part with um, we, we built it with the plywood with like a thicker wood and then um, we carpeted that area so that it has like a little edge where the kids could actually sit on it they could be like a little stage so it's so cute. And I and we bought a lot of our furniture too, also on Amazon, which is so neat. So our color scheme is like white. It's like a modern um, farmhouse style. So it's white, blacks and grays and pops of color everywhere. Mm, awesome. Yeah, awesome. not overstimulating, not too boring. <laughs> yeah, totally. So it's totally. pretty awesome. So how is your life different now than it was a year ago? Oh, oh my goodness. I wake up and I, it's such a different feeling because it's your own. And I feel that it's like full circle that this is where I'm meant to be right now, even though I have all these other new dreams and aspirations to do. But right now, this is, it's just feels so good to be your own boss and to, to, you know, work, wake up and, and do something for yourself. When you invest in yourself, you're investing in, and so many different things, you know, it helps you mentally. So, you know, psychologically, just so many things it's, and you're able to also empower yourself and empower others. And if you can do it, others can do it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's so different. It's, and I just love it. It's very fulfilling. I wake up every morning. I do this whole thing. I, I listen to worship music. I, I thank God every day, you know, and, and it just sets, resets my mind every morning, you know, and I just mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. Awesome. So What's different. been your, your biggest roadblock along this journey that you've had to overcome? Um, let me see. The roadblocks. Let me see. Hmm. I have to think about that. I just think the time, maybe I would have, I wish I would have been able to open up sooner, you know, be, be, only because it was hard to find a place in San mm -hmm. Diego. There's a shortage of rentals too, as well. <laughs> yeah yeah there's always there's like 50 other applicants applying for the same place and so that a lot of the things was time constraints so yeah even though I lost I stopped working in February I couldn't open officially till September so during February to September or was March when I signed up for our I could have did online up until then but I it was always it was a struggle should I go back to work full-time and then you know if I did that I wouldn't be here where I'm right and yeah so, you know had to Listen, take that leap of faith. Funny. Yes, exactly. And it's so true. Once you take that leap of faith, you just keep going. You just keep mm -hmm. going. What's next? Yeah. What's next? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's such a scary step not to, you know, not like when you have that choice, like, can I just go back to what I'm used to, what I'm comfortable with, but not happy with it? But is that better? Because who knows? The the other path is unknown and this path yes. is unknown. I, I know I don't like it. <laughs> I yes. know it's not where I need to be, but it's better than the unknown. And we have like, oh, the the <laughs> so scary. It is so true. But once you jump and you take that leap and you actually do it, everything starts to fall in place. Mm hmm. Yeah. And how has, um, how have the preschool all-stars helped you along the way? Oh my gosh. They have motivated me, uplifted me. I love all their, the support group things that we have, like support Saturday, tech Tuesday. Um, the w women that we have are very knowledgeable and they all have their different, you know, niches and what they love to do. And it's just so neat to learn from others. You know, we, we think that we know it, um, we got it down sometimes, you know, but honestly, we can't do this alone. Um, mm -hmm. There's always something every day that we can learn. And, and I think that when, when we're on that group, it's just such a great sisterhood that I've actually developed friendships and it's so awesome. It's so mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I actually got to meet one in the wild last week. Did we had you? A, did a event. Me and Miranda did an event together because oh, I love Miranda. Yeah, we did a, a Halloween trunk or treat event with both of our preschools, and it was so oh, cool. That is so awesome. It's so amazing to see the things that she's doing as well. Mm -hmm. It's just so awesome. Yeah, she's doing and such and yeah. Just, just such cool stuff. connecting with sisters it, it just fires you up and inspires you even more and it's just like mm -hmm. oh that's such a great idea and no one even like oh you're stealing my ideas not at all it's it's everyone's yeah. you know sharing. all there to share it yeah and we need I to get together it. one big like all-stars meetup one day yeah joy <laughs> may do it should do a call oh, yeah. oh, wow. we need to, we need to, what's your new project joy i know you're a little bit busy with your new house and everything love but, it. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I cannot wait. Yeah, one day, one day. We will. So what is your piece of advice for any ladies who are where you were a year ago, not knowing what's going to happen, kind of afraid of the unknown, going back and forth? What would you say to them to give them some encouragement? What I would say is the time is now. They always think, you know, we always think sometimes, you know what, wait, let me get a job right now. So then that way I can save enough money to do what I need to do to in order to open your own school. But mm -hmm. Joy lays it out that there's so many different ways you can start online and keep your job in the meantime and while mm -hmm. you save up, if that's the case. Um, but I just say jump in full, full on and don't look back, just keep going. Mm -hmm. just face your fear head on because if you don't then you never know what could have happened you know so. yes absolutely awesome thank well you so much for having me, Bethany. thank you so much for talking to me you got so much going on and it's so exciting and i'm so happy for you and i can't wait to hear about your next steps maybe awesome. the center would be the next step is yeah. that what your thought yep yep that's the that's the plan the dream the plan is to buy a property to build a dream school or even yes. have an existing property to to do that i think that would be so awesome and perfect never limit yourself you know yes yes you're gonna make it happen now definitely have a good awesome. one thank you you too bye bye if you'd like to have a success story just like that one i invite you to join our preschool all-stars it's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly q a lives support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools and my exclusive access to preschool university every training and done for you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start run and grow your preschool we've all been there and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time we'd love for you to join our preschool all-stars membership just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to a immediately jump into Preschool All-Stars. Again, go to preschoolallstars.com and we'll see you there.